name is Ankit Patel, and we'll be talking about our solution to an HCI problem, which concerns improving user interface interactions in the Touch Board application called Photon. Uh, before we get started, um, what exactly is multi-touch? Multi-touch denotes a set of interaction techniques which allow computer users to control graphical applications with one or more fingers. Uh, today we see them everywhere. iPod Touch and iPhone are among the popular. Our design problem uh, of interest was an iPod Touch uh, application called Photon, like I mentioned. Uh, it allows users to manipulate images in various ways. Um, however, there was there were some design flaws that existed which we felt needed to be addressed uh, because at the time we discovered the application, it was listed in the top 20 in the iTunes store under its category. First, we observed uh, others using this application and most found that it was not very user friendly in performing various tasks. Also, there was a lack of user feedback. Uh, there was no clear direction on how to complete each of the tasks. Um, I'm going to briefly go over some of the some of the flaws and details uh, before we talk about the changes we made to our to the photon app. In the crop tool, uh, the photon only had static sizes for the area that you wanted to crop out, so you could choose from different predetermined crop sizes, uh, but there was no way to make it dynamic. Also, in the uh, just lighting tool. Photon had a left-right arrow to change the lighting, but no feedback on how uh, how far the threshold has progressed. Also, this get, it gets annoying because you do press the arrows repeatedly. As far as the rotate function goes, uh, Photon did support it, so many of the users we interviewed uh, felt that any photo, any photo editing application should have a rotate. So why is this all important? Well, over the past couple of years, uh, there's been increased popularity of multi-touch devices, and this is just the start as Microsoft is coming out with a, a multi-touch supported operating system soon called Windows 7. Also there are many photo, uh, photo editing applications on iTunes store, but uh, most of them only add effects or have limited editing options, and on top of this they're not all easy to use. This slide lays out some of the proposed changes to the Photon app. First we redesigned the user interface by changing buttons and uh, making them more meaningful to the user. We also added features such as flashing markers we'll see, that you'll see later that would allow the user to have a better sense of uh, what to do and how to navigate throughout the application. Finally, we, we, we designed the process of some of the tasks such as crop, rotate, and adjust lighting tools. Marie will now talk about our prototype. We created a, we created a low photo fidelity prototype for our testing. We attempted to make this as interactive and realistic as possible by making it the actual size of an eye touch, um, creating a card for each subtask, and mimicking flashing actions using a moving tab. This is the main screen of the interface. The icon for the edit feature of the current version of Photon consists of three dots. We attempted to we changed this icon to simply say edit. Each time a change is saved, the application would automatically return to this screen. When the edit button is pressed, the display changes to this screen. We redesigned the menu to pop up over the image, enlarge the icons, and created visible buttons to press. In Photon, the edit menu is small and located on a bar at the bottom of the screen. Our task focused on rotate, crop, and adjust. Once Rotate is selected from the menu, the screen appears. The flashing arrows activate to prompt the user to select the arrow and drag to the desired location. The Save option appears each time after the user activates an action. This is the current interface of beside our prototype. Notice the prototype, but the buttons are much further apart and the bar visually displays the level of adjustment. The flashing circle slides to the desired location on the bar and the transparent screen gives visibility to the photo beneath and allows the user to witness the changes as they occur. This is the photo of, the, of Photon beside our prototype showing the crop feature. Our prototype eliminates menu buttons and provides dynamic interaction by allowing the user to change the selection area to any size and location. 
Next set, Nicole will be talking about. Um, our target audience in this testing was college students who own and use an iPhone or an iPod who would enjoy using their device as a photo editing tool. Um, during our testing, we measured a few parameters to get some data, and those parameters were um, measuring the number of errors for each subtask involved in each task, the ease of performance for each subtask, and any delay in performance. We tested four subjects, and they were each given our three tasks. And after testing, each participant was given a survey. And the survey would ask questions like if they owned an iPod, um, how comfortable they were using multi-touch devices, how they, much they enjoyed using our prototype, and how easy it was for them to use. And we have a video of somebody actually using the prototype. Okay, this is our main screen here. Um, the first task that we had them do was rotate. So the participant hits the edit button and our new edit menu pops up. He will press the rotate button. This will cause the rotate screen to pop up and you can see our flashing arrows there we created. He's going to press the arrow here instead of dragging. There was some confusion with that. Um, after he has changed the photo, he hits save to bring them back to the main screen. The next task is going to be to adjust the brightness. So again, he hits edit, um, goes to the adjust brightness. And then you see the flashing circles here. However, he hits the arrow on the end, which again was another mistake a lot of our participants made. And again, he saves changes. The third task is crop. In this one, you're going to notice a lot more hesitation because, again, there was a lot of confusion and this was the one where there was the most. It's crop on the edit menu. And then we ask him to crop. You can see he hesitates. And finally, he will end up dragging one finger in, which was a little bit off. No. Well, and then he will hit save, and it will take him back to the main screen again. And Tyler will not talk about our important findings. Okay. Sorry. That's all right. All right, I'm going to talk about our data. We measured participants on a scale of 0 to 3 for each of the subtasks. 3 meaning that they completed the task flawlessly, 0 meaning that they either failed to complete the task or completed the task incorrectly. Goodness. Um, <laughs> Uh, with graph 1, you can see the, uh, the press arrow and uh, drag finger actions were completed most inconsistently. Um, the adjust function, the press and drag functions, again, were inconsistent. The uh, press uh, slider subtask was incorrect, or is zigzag like this, probably because some uh, researchers interpreted uh, correct action differently. Uh, the crop function was the most difficult for uh, our participants. Uh, probably mainly because of the uh, addition of the move uh, function that created wild inconsistencies, as you can see there. Uh, the biggest stumbling block regarding multi-touch technology is that most of the gestures aren't programmed into our society yet, and they still have to be learned. Another thing we discovered is that even though we approved a lot of the previous interface, we, uh, there's still lots of improvements that can be made. For instance, the, uh, the move function and the crop thing just seemed to confuse people. Uh, finally, we learned that viewing results that defied our expectations helped us think of uh, better ways to improve usability in the future. And now Andy's going to talk about some of these changes that we're planning to make. Alright, some of the future improvements that could be made to our design, um, starting with the rotate function. Um, we saw earlier the user tapped um, these arrows instead of dragging. Um, this could be improved so that every time the user taps the arrow, it will automatically rotate 90 degrees. Um, this will make it more user friendly and hopefully reduce errors. Um, moving on to the adjust function, um, this could be made to be more interactive by allowing these arrows to flash as well as the center diode. Um, and so the users could tap these two arrows to uh, increase or decrease brightness or contrast um, instead of only being able to drag this. And that way, every time they press um, either of the two arrows, they'll be able to see the diode move up or down. Again, hopefully, this will increase usability. And then finally, the crop function, we removed the um, move button from the center of the crop box. Um, it was kind of too confusing to the user, too busy 
and then also remove two of the diodes from the corners.